Okay. The recording is start now. Hi, everyone. Good morning. Welcome, everyone, to Fit2107 again. Uh, this is a software quality and testing unit. And uh, in this week, we will talk, uh, this is week nine already. We will talk about what is the code review, okay? <clears throat> Yeah, so uh, today, uh, the learning outcome, uh, by the end of this session, you should be able to understand what is the code review, why it is so important, what is the code review process, who are the people uh, that are involved in the code review process, and how to uh, conduct a code review as well, what is the benefit, what are the pros and the cons, that kind of thing, okay? Uh, so uh, maybe... <clears throat> Before we get started, actually, the, the concept of the code review was originally from uh, Linus. Uh, this is a Linus law. Uh, they mentioned that uh, given enough but, uh, eyeballs, uh, all bugs are shallow. So that means uh, uh, this kind of term, the code review was uh, coined by Eric Raymond uh, in the honor of the Linus uh, Tawo. Uh, and it is also the mantra of the open source movement as well. So that means in the open source software system, them, right everyone contribute uh, uh, voluntarily uh, by the volunteer and how can we ensure that the, the the code base is of high quality right so normally people use the code review process and uh, they when they start they didn't call it code review but uh, when it is mature everyone recognize that uh, code review is quite important because when someone who write the code uh, there will be someone else who actually check the code, uh, review uh, the pro, uh, review the, the artifacts or that kind of thing, right? Double check, provide the feedback. So then they can discover bugs more efficiently as well. So that's why uh, it becomes a, a, a mandatory process nowadays in most of the software companies. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah. So if you are, uh, if you like to understand more, you can check uh, this video as well. Uh, Maybe I should open for a few minutes, all right? Uh, and I should share the computer sound as well. Okay, I'm gonna open. And if you don't hear the video, please let me know as well. The law was established by Eric S. Raymond in his book, The Cathedral and the Bazaar. The law is named after Linus Torvalds. Raymond stated that, given a large enough beta tester and a co-developer base, almost every problem will be categorized quickly and the fix is obvious to someone. In simpler words, given enough eyeballs, all bugs are shallow. You must be wondering how this is relevant to a software. The answer is that an operating system or application will be more secure when you can inspect the code, share it with experts and other members of your user community, identify potential problems and create fixes quickly, implying that the security benefits of open source software depend directly from its openness and quality assurance. An operating system or application will be more credible if a qualified person inspects the code, identifies potential problems and fixes it in minimum time. Linus aimed at maximizing the number of person hours thrown at debugging and development even at the potential cost of instability in the code and user base burnout if any serious bug proved intractable. He formulated that given a large enough beta tester and co-developer base, almost every problem can be characterized and fixed quickly. A dichotomy between the cathedral builder and bazaar styles lies with the Linus law. In the cathedral builder view of programming, bugs and development problems are tricky, insidious, deep phenomena. It takes a decent amount of time for a dedicated few to develop confidence that's desired. Whereas in the bizarre view, it is assumed that bugs are generally shallow phenomena, or at least that they turn shallow pretty quickly when exposed to a thousand eager co-developers pounding on every single new release. Linus's law highlights the power of an open source software, OSS Preview. As a high profile model of large scale online collaboration, OSS development often involves globally dispersed experts, mostly volunteers, collaborating over the internet to produce software with source code freely available. 
Peer reviews is one of the core collaborative practices of OSS development. Distributed participants evaluate and test the released software products and report any problems they discovered or experienced. Others jointly analyze and identify software defects or deficiencies and generate solutions for repairing or improving the software products. Participants who contribute to bug reports are crucial assets for OSS projects to retain. This is because they're certainly more motivated than general Firefox users as they use more efficient bug tracking systems to report, analyze, and fix bugs. OSS peer review is widely believed to be remarkably benefiting from a large community, many eyeballs of members with different perspectives. In general, the OSS preview process begins with one submitting a bug report to the bug tracking system, an application that helps developers keep track of reported defects or deficiencies of source code, design, and documents. Others examine the defect causes and request additional information to determine whether the bug should be fixed. Once a solution is reached, they then commit a change set, mostly a patch, to the current software product. The law is often referred to as a mantra of the open source movement, but also a fallacy owing to the lack of supporting evidence. Furthermore, several researchers have indicated that the rate at which additional bugs are uncovered does not scale linearly with the number of reviewers. Practitioners also promote rigid, separate code analysis during a software project's development. They tend to focus on an in-depth review by a few, and not primarily the number of eyeballs. That's all for today's video. Do like, share, and subscribe for more information. That's right. That's the background of the uh, code review in the open source software system. Uh, why they are so important. <clears throat> okay, so let's try to... Uh, practice some code review together as well. Let's say uh, I'm right now I'm writing a, a function to find the minimum value in an array, okay? So that's the array input into the Python program. Uh, let's find the minimum number of that array. So if the length of the array is equal to zero, it means the, the array is empty. It should return none. Otherwise we want to find what is the minimum array. So, okay, can you help me uh, find the bug in this uh, program. Let's give uh, some time to you, let's say two minutes, okay? Let, let's try to uh, take a look at this together, this, this code, yeah. And let me know, type in the Zoom chat, yeah. Just want to check if you can draw like an annotate or not, uh, please let me know as well. If you can, then let's draw on the screen, okay? Yeah. Where's the bar? Yeah. Can you find any? Uh, where is the bar? Please type in the Zoom chat. Line, okay, uh, we got an answer, uh, line six, okay. Any other potential answers?
Anything else? Uh, line six is not uh, technically uh, correct yet. Uh, it's not correct. Uh, which line? Uh, so basically, line six, we just want to set the, uh, the, the mean, how can I say, like uh, just a temporary number. Line 10, okay, we got uh, another answer, line 10. Uh, so can you suggest as well the, why this is this line is buggy? Maybe would you like to talk? I, I can allow you. Uh, one second. Yeah. Yeah, would you like to explain a little bit why it is line 10? I think it should be less than instead of less than equals. Right, exactly. Fantastic. You are excellent. Yeah, that's right. So uh, because we want to find the minimum number, right? So the number should be less than minimum value. Thank you so much. Okay. Uh, yep, that's right. And uh, yep. Okay. Thank you. That's right. Uh, that, that's a good practice of the uh, uh, code review. We, we When we do the code review together, we can find the box as well, right? But when we do the code review, it's not just only the code, but we can review the test code as well. Okay. So let's say if I uh, write this uh, test code here, we want to test the five minimum, five minimum right? Uh, can you tell me uh, quickly where's the bug? What's wrong with this test code? Uh, that kind of thing. Yeah. Okay. Everyone write unit testing like a for Y already. So I'm sure you are an expert already. So where's the bug here? What's wrong? There are so many bugs in this uh, Python uh, test code. This one. Okay. Yeah. Just raise your hand. I would. Yeah. Yeah. I will allow you to uh, uh, present as well, yeah. Anyone? If it is in uh, an in-person uh, classroom, I will give you some chocolate already. <laughs> Otherwise, I'm gonna give you a virtual one, all right? <laughs> okay. Who? Who would like to be a volunteer? Yeah. What's wrong? Yeah. How to fix this code? Yeah. Where's the bug? and how to fix them. Yeah. Anyone? Just type in the Zoom chat. Uh... We need some software test, uh, tester champion here. Yeah. Don't be afraid, don't worry. Just give it a go, give it a try. And surprisingly, this code is a common bug as well. Like uh, when uh, during the week two, week three, uh, student uh, get struggle a lot as well, yeah. Where's the bug here? It's obvious. Yeah. Anyone? Line, okay, we got uh, an answer uh, from Merrick, okay? Uh, line seven should return to from the five minimum, five minimum. Yes, that's right, okay? This is uh, should be two. That's the five minimum, right? And this one, maybe I'll just correct as well. It should be less than, okay? What else? Yeah, there are a few more bugs as well in this Python code, yeah? Yeah, what, what else? What else? Self-assert equal, that's right, that's right, thank you, okay. You got it, yes, self-assert, yes. Okay, what else? What else, yeah. Help me, yes. What else, yeah. <laughs> wow. It's like playing play, playing game. Test find minimal self. That's right. <laughs> That's also correct as well. Yes, we need to inherit the the class uh, from the unit test. Uh, that's right. Okay. What else? Let's go. We are nearly there. Ew. 
The class should be a shy of the that yeah that's right that's right we need to inherit this one yeah you need test dot test case that's right okay yeah we need to inherit uh, from the unit test library as well yeah that's right and actually last one uh, another bar uh, which is quite uh, difficult as well so this one it should be uh, ninety nine yeah. It should be 99, yeah. So yeah, that's it, okay. All right, you can try it at home as well. Okay, thanks a lot, uh, everyone. Uh, and then, yeah, that's why we, when we do the code review, we can find more bugs, right? Okay, <clears throat> but I'm gonna tell you uh, a little bit more uh, theory now that um, in terms of the code review practices in the past, there are basically two types of the code review, okay? And what we are doing is called uh, traditional style, okay? It's called traditional Falcon inspection. We just finished the code review, surprisingly, okay? So it is defined as a formal, efficient, economical economical method of finding errors in design and the code. It is developed uh, by IBM in 1976. Uh, and when we talk about the fact and inspection code review, it means it is it is quite structured, it is rigid, it is heavyweight, it is an in-person meeting. It is very waterfall, it is not really efficient, it is quite costly as well. It involves lots of uh, review checklists as well, right? Like in the uh, like in this slide, look, look, like what we are doing, we spend like a few minutes, right? Roughly five or 10 minutes. And how many people in the room helping me uh, to uh, discover the bugs? And if we translate this kind of uh, effort into the real world software development course, uh, we need to pay a salary, right? Uh, in uh, in real world software companies, that's that is actually cost a lot as well because everyone need to be available at the same time, living in the same room, in the same meeting room, same meeting, uh, work together, look looking at just uh, one piece of code, right? So that's really a, a traditional style. But nowadays, uh, we we are moving towards uh, global software development now. Think about Android developing, uh, no, sorry, Android operating system. That's a mobile operating system, right? Think about, uh, what is that? Other open source software system, uh, Ubuntu, uh, Firefox, uh, Mozilla Firefox, uh, Eclipse, IDE, that kind of thing. These are the open source software uh, system. And developers are all around the world. Uh, we cannot conduct, uh, uh, we cannot use the, the traditional Falcon inspection at all, right? Especially in the open source software system. So that's why we need to, uh, right now we are moving towards the modern code review system, uh, modern code review practices where we use like a GitHub pull request, uh, GitLab merge request, whatever, uh, the mechanism is the same. They just use different name, pull request, merge request, change request, or whatever, you know? And when we use this kind of uh, modern code review system, first, it's quite flexible because everyone do not need to be, everyone does not need to be at the same room in the same, in the same physical location. Uh, it is more like we process. There's no checklist uh, and there are two support as well, right? For example, GitHub, GitLab, Jurid, Bitbucket, Review Board, and it is more asynchronous as well. It doesn't need to be uh, like a, if uh, the, the code author uh, create a code in the morning, reviewer someone else who, who are not other, uh, who is uh, someone other than the code author can review the code in the afternoon as well, you know? So it's more asynchronous. Uh, and that's why people are moving towards um, uh, this uh, modern code review, code review process, okay? And this is just an example of, uh, let's say, I think this is a GitHub, okay? GitHub pull request. That means uh, normally when you create a new piece of code and someone else uh, who is uh, uh, 
the the human okay this is a bot but human can uh, provide some feedback okay to that piece of code as well whether the code is good or not follow the traditional style or not uh, follow the standard or not whether the variable name uh, is in the right uh, format or in the right standard or not as well right so there are so many many things that uh, we can check as well okay in terms of the code review and uh, there's a research shows uh, this is a this is a research conducted by Microsoft uh, Microsoft Research, uh, which is uh, conducted in uh, 2013, 10 years ago already. Uh, time flies very fast. So they found a lot of uh, benefits when doing code reviews at Microsoft as well. For example, uh, they find that um, uh, code review can find defects, improve the code or suggest alternative solutions as well, right? Um, so they found that uh, code review, which is a, an effective one, can reduce more than half of the defects, which is better than the testing phase as well. Testing phase, if we don't write the test case, we cannot find the bugs, okay? That's, uh, that's what we teach uh, in, uh, in, the first few weeks, uh, in the first few weeks as well. Testing only uh, shows the presence of the bugs, but, but not their absence. That's the quote from the die star. And, but uh, when we do the code review, if we don't write any test cases, uh, using human, using our brand, we can still uh, find uh, bugs as well. And sometimes we can find more bugs than the testing as well testing process, right? And they find that uh, more code review, uh, uh, we can uh, like uh, discover less numbers of defects uh, uh, during the production as well. And we can discover more uh, design anti-patterns as well, right? But what I want to emphasize here is that uh, it's not just only the finding defects, but it's about knowledge transfer, team awareness. It's about share code ownership as well. Uh, let's, let's think about this one, right? When we do this uh, piece of code, uh, like uh, review this code together, everyone understand the code line by line. So it can uh, create some perception that uh, this piece of code is owned by you already. That's uh, the code ownership perspective, right? Because it's already uh, passed your code review, right? Uh, where is that? Oh, I skipped one slide. <laughs> Okay, I'll go back uh, later, all right? Uh, yeah, more collaborative, uh, it can provide suggestion. Uh, it, it will make the team more collaborative as well. Uh, you can provide uh, suggestions rather than listing the defects, right? And novice developers, like uh, junior developers can also learn from the experienced developers uh, through the code review process as well, right? Like, uh, like this one, let's say that I'm an expert, right? Uh, you can find a few numbers of defects, but if I am an experienced uh, developer, I can discover more. You know, and then you learn as well. Oh yeah, we missed this one. Okay, that's why we next time in the future, you know uh, what, what went wrong in the past and now you can apply that kind of knowledge in the future as well. When we declare the class here, we need to inherit from the, what is that unit test, the test case and uh, test five minimum. We need to, uh, that's a constructor of the class and we need to put the self as well, self.assert equal, that kind of thing, you know? So it's about knowledge transfer. It's about learning rather than just discover defects. That's why uh, uh, code reviews are uh, have lots of benefits and it is used nowadays. Um, uh, and at Google as well, right? Uh, the figure on the right here, uh, draw, okay, yeah. Fig figure on the right side here. Uh, these are the five reasons why Google use a uh, code review actively, okay? First is about education, uh, mentoring, learning, knowledge dissemination. Second is about accident prevention. You can find bugs, find defects, ensure high quality of the code. Uh, it can act as a gatekeeping as well. It can prevent uh, arbitrary code to be committed or security uh, issues as well, right? Uh, it can trace, uh, it can track uh, the bugs, how the code is changed. Everyone understand, everyone is aware of it. Okay, and uh, the code is more readable as well. What I want to say, one thing I forget is that uh, at Google, they have a strong policy that anyone who update the code, there must be someone else who actually review the code and approve it. Otherwise, that code contribution will not be merged to the main repository as well. So that means uh, 
if uh, the code base is changed when there are at least uh, two or more people involved in that one and approve it, you know, otherwise the code will not be changed and it will not be updated at all. So this is to avoid that, uh, uh, like uh, the code author who wrote it, right, wrote the, the piece of code, there must be an uh, the reviewer who actually review it and confirm that uh, this piece of code is correct. If you cannot, the code author cannot satisfy, write a code that satisfy the reviewers, there's a likely chance that the, the code will be approved or, or merged into the main repository. Okay, does that make sense? All right. And I forget to uh, talk about the, the code review process. Okay, I'm going to go back to one slide here. Okay, this is a traditional modern code review process, abstracted to make it uh, uh, understand. Okay, uh, normally we start from, uh, there are a few stakeholders here. Okay, first, the, uh, an author. Let's say you are an author, you would like to create a new piece of code, okay, a pull request, you can uh, upload a new patch or a new pull request to the GitHub, all right? And then uh, as an author, the second step is that you need to select the reviewers, okay? Who should be the review reviewers? Let's say you invite me uh, to be a reviewer, okay? you got uh, a few numbers of reviewers already and some of your friends, all right? That's a review preparation phase, okay? Now, when we do the review execution phase, right? So it means that once you get the reviewers here, you got a team, okay? A team of reviewers looking at the code, examining the code. Uh, this is a change. Uh, let's say this is a git diff, okay? In the Python, uh, git diff in the git, GitHub, that kind of thing. And then uh, you look at the review the code, whether the code is correct or not, or and, and comment line by line, that kind of thing. If uh, the code looks good, uh, then they can accept or approve, uh, approve the, the change request, uh, this one, right? Otherwise, uh, if uh, the reviewers reject the, the code here, uh, then they need to provide the feedback and a revision is required. So it's gonna be a continuous uh, improvement process here until the code is uh, uh, reached the, the acceptable standard, uh, it is ready to be approved, uh, then uh, reviewers ap ap will approve the code change and then uh, there will be an automated uh, testing phase, let's say CI, CD, you know, uh, and then if it is passed, then the code will be merged into the upstream uh, version control system, this one, the main repositories, right? Otherwise, uh, uh, if the code, ch code change is uh, too much, uh, then the, the, <clears throat> the, review, uh, the authors have to break it down, improve it, reject and submit a new one, that kind of thing. So there are lots of lots of uh, process and details behind the code review, okay? It, why it looks like a, 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 an intensive process, right? But it is still uh, have lots of benefits as I show here as well. I already talked about uh, the benefits here and here, but I would just uh, mention about this figure a little bit, right? So basically in the, this paper, the article, uh, this paper, you can read later as well if you are interested. They conduct a, a survey study with the, with the several hundred or thousand Microsoft developers, right? To uh, ask their perception, what are the motivations, why they conduct the code review, what are the challenges behind the code review process? And these are the results that they found, okay? What are the top, the second uh, and third motivation why they conduct the code review? Because uh, it can help uh, developers uh, finding defects, improvement, suggest alternative solutions or whatever, right? And and this is the results from Google as well. And it seems that the results are quite consistent between Google and the Microsoft. They agree on the same thing, right? It's about code improvement, social uh, communication, team awareness, uh, knowledge transfer, share code ownership. Uh, it is uh, also follows the, what is that AI testing principles that I uh, mentioned to you, to you before as well during the week two, right? Okay. So that's a code review. And in terms of what is a code review, modern code review practices, right? So it is one of the software quality assurance practices. Uh, when we talk about SQA practices in the week two, we talk about software testing, we talk about uh, inspection, uh, white box, uh, black box, and uh, code review. Code review is also static analysis, right? Uh, it doesn't, we do, uh, as a reviewer, we don't need to execute the source code. We just look at the code, 
uh, manually and identify the defects from our own uh, expertise. Mm -hmm. And basically, uh, first code review is one of the SQA practice and code review is the process where someone, this is the definition, someone else other than the code author examines that piece of code, okay? That's it, nothing more than that, right? And at Google, as I mentioned before, we use code review to maintain the quality of the code and the products as well. And at Google, they, they recommend that uh, uh, they recommend that code review must be performed at every commit, right? So every commit, when you commit one commit, uh, it cannot, your contribution will not be worthwhile. It will not be integrated into the main repository unless someone else approve it, okay? So yeah, so uh, the, the process, uh, code review process at Google is quite strict here. Mm -hmm. And uh, they found that code review is the best time to ensure the code is of good quality, right? What happened if you uh, use CICD as a testing process? It's too time consuming. Think about large software system. You, come, you, you, you create a implement new feature, you don't test local, but you commit, keep committing, committing, committing. What will happen is that the CI CD will take time, right? To build, to interpret, uh, to, to build the system, to compile, to integrate every features, test every functions together. Uh, and let's say if one build, one CI build takes, let's say five minutes. And if uh, there are 10 developers, 100 uh, developers, they commit uh, code change at the same time. That will take like several hours, several days already to finish the process, finish the CI build, you know? <clears throat> so to make the uh, software development process, to make the QA process more effective and more efficient, that's why they put the code review uh, at the beginning as a gatekeeper, as a, as a step uh, before the CI, CD build, okay? Uh, yeah. And otherwise, uh, once the code is in production, it's hard to justify, right? So uh, we should avoid any testing in production at all. We should not, uh, if we don't do any code review, what will happen is that you commit the code and just keep committing, CI, CD, build, fail, 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 fail. And then uh, if it is approved, but there's a bug, it will go to the uh, uh, production anyway. So it's not... Uh, uh, it's not effective and not efficient at all. Yeah. It will impact the quality of the software system, right? But it doesn't mean that you should spend like five days to do the code review, you know? It should be done like quickly. Good code should be understandable like quickly, right? Uh, think about this, this piece of code. Just only the, a few lines of code here, right? Probably less than 10. If we, we can do it together. Let's say this is a new feature. We can do it together in five minutes, three minutes. We can discover the bugs easily. When the code uh, is readable, we can do it. Yeah. But if the code is poorly written, no one will understand. Let's say if I use some other uh, <clears throat> uh, piece of code, right? And uh, probably it will take like forever uh, for us to understand what the code is and where is the bug, right? So that's why good code review, that there are a few principles as well, how to do the code, uh, how to do the code review, okay? Yeah, and this is at Google again, uh, based on this book, all right? Uh, this book by Titus, uh, Software Engineering at Google by Titus uh, Winters. Uh, I met him once as well uh, at the conference. Code reviews at Google, so they said that every code change is reviewed, uh, must be reviewed. Uh, that means 75% of the code reviews are approved by uh, only one reviewer already, uh, but uh, for the rest, probably one or more. Uh, it is a company-wide approval criteria. It's a company-wide. This is something, uh, something serious at Google, right? And approval needs ownership right and readability certificate. Wow. So that means uh, not everyone can be the reviewers, right? Uh, it must be someone, let's say, a core contributors, that kind of thing. I can uh, briefly explain a little bit as well. Let's say at Google, right? Uh, there are or open source software system. There are two types of the contributors. This is the contributors. First, normally people call, call, call contributors. 
the, the core developers of the open source software system. And this is uh, could be OSS uh, uh, software developers, right? Uh, like you. So let's say if you create a piece of code, okay, here, that means uh, this piece of code must be reviewed or approved by the core developers first. Otherwise, the code will not be integrated into the software system, in, into the main repository at all, okay? And sometimes uh, it takes like four hours to complete the code review, right? It takes time. Yeah, small reviews are completed within one hour, but large reviews could be within five hours as well. So that means, uh, let's say the, the core developers or approver or, or, or the person who have that kind of right, maybe sometimes uh, they don't uh, write the code at all. Their job is just to review the code, review the code every day, every day, right? Uh, that, and and uh, so that means uh, because uh, code review is time consuming, it is quite expensive. Small and frequent reviews are the best practice, okay? So what you should not do, let's say you create a commit with 200 lines of code, Oh my goodness, right? Uh, how long does it take to review this piece of code? It's take a while. But if, let's say, if you change just only a few lines of code, let's say 10, okay? Uh, they found that 90% of the code changes at Google, right? Uh, are less than 10 files or 24 lines of code. So it is very small, very frequent. Yeah, you can approve more, more frequent. But if you have like a change, thousand lines of code, I'm sure that commit or that pull request will get stuck like forever. No one will understand it. No one will approve it, okay? There are a few things uh, we need to discuss about the good practice and the, bad pra uh, uh, the good and the bad practice as well, okay? And this is another, the, uh, another article by the, uh, uh, professor from University of Victoria in Canada, okay? They, discuss about what are the code review best practices as well, right? Uh, but when we talk about the best practices, because there are different stakeholders involved in the code review process, it's not just only the author, but also the reviewer, the team, and the organization as well, okay? So I will start one by one, right? As an author, there are, uh, as an author, right? First, you need, uh, this is about how do you prepare the code change uh, for review. First, it, you need to be, uh, uh, con, uh, this one, you need to change carefully, be careful about the code change, okay? And you need to aim for small and incremental change. Uh, that's what I mentioned before. Small, less numbers of files, <coughs> atomic, yeah, you know? Small one, uh, unit uh, level, uh, don't change too much. Uh, and you can cluster the related change as well. Let's say, one commit involves 10 features. That's not the, the right way to commit the, the code change for review, right? Uh, but what would be better is that uh, there are multiple change in one commit, but everything is related together. It's about one feature. But because uh, when we change, uh, improve the, uh, when we change this feature, it impacts multiple files, that kind of thing. Let's say change variable names, okay? It impacts multiple files. That's why uh, maybe we should cluster the change uh, relate, that are related together into one commit, right? And good code review as an author, you should describe and motivate your change as well. Why did we need? Why do we need this pull request? Why do we need to change it? Right? Uh, what are, what is the justification? And what you should do is that you should test and analyze before submitting for the code review as well. As I mentioned before, you don't want to write the the piece of code, contribute a new code without testing it and just submit uh, to the CI/CD. It's too time consuming. Uh, no, sorry, it is really expensive to, to do the CI bill, you know, okay. Uh, you can run the sanity check is, as well, right? Does this really need review? So that means when you submit the piece of code, you should ensure that uh, it uh, passed the test case that you write, it can uh, pass the static analysis, uh, the, the sanity check, uh, it passed the code quality, the code complexity is low enough, is not really complex or whatever, right? Before you uh, commit uh, uh, or submit uh, to the pull request, okay? Yeah, that's 
uh, the, the first part, how do you prepare the code change for the code review? But when we do uh, select and notify the reviewers, right? You should uh, decide uh, or understand the company policy. How many reviewers are really needed? Sometimes they need two, uh, sorry, they need two. Sometimes they need three, sometimes they need four, right? It really depends. And in uh, some open source software system, it doesn't mean that uh, the reviewers need to be uh, human all the time. Sometimes, right now, uh, currently we have like a reviewer bot as well, uh, an automate bot, uh, that kind of thing to uh, conduct a quality check in your code uh, based on rules and patterns, that kind of thing, okay? Uh, you can select reviewers with the right experience at all. What do I mean is that, uh, let's say uh, we implement this feature, but you ask someone else who are not experienced in this feature at all to review the code. So it's not uh, appropriate at all, right? So you need to think about what are the best heuristics to uh, find the right uh, reviewers as well to uh, speed up the code review process, right? Mm -hmm. uh, there are multiple factors to, to, to think about as well. Who should be, uh, what are the most important factors to, uh, to consider uh, before selecting the reviewers, okay? For example, uh, in the past, okay, uh, is uh, one of my research areas. So uh, for example, uh, code review to find the right reviewer, probably you want to find uh, the reviewers who uh, review uh, similar files before, uh, similar file part before, who have experience in the subfolder here, let's say uh, this is uh, the directory, right? Uh, you want to change this file, but there are the other file, uh, but reviewers review the other files before in the same uh, subdirectory here. Probably you can invite them as well. Assume that uh, they have some expertise, right? Uh, they are responsible, oversee uh, the code change in this kind of module or whatever, okay? So you need to consider a multiple aspect as well, but not just only the technical aspect, you should consider the social uh, aspect as well. For example, whether they are available or not, uh, but you should and you should not uh, burden the reviewers as well. Let's say, oh, this person uh, is the, the top reviewers. And what happened is that, uh, uh, for any hundred new pull requests, you just uh, invite them, invite them, invite them, right? So it's quite burden. Uh, we, we, we need to ensure that the workload among the reviewers are fair, are balanced, or that kind of thing as well, okay? There are, so that means when you select the reviewers, you should consider both the, um, the, the technical and the social aspect, okay? Yeah, allow reviewers to self-select when possible, check who else, uh, who else to notify, uh, but don't spam at all, notify as early as possible and explain the change, okay? That's the, the, the best practice to select and notify reviewers. And when uh, this is uh, when you do the rest part and commit the change, okay? Okay, let's move to the reviewers, okay? What should be, how to be a good reviewer as well, right? Uh, as a reviewer, we should set a dedica dedicated and bow uh, time aside for your reviews. Let's say today we have eight hours. I'm gonna set aside four hours to do the to do the code review only for uh, for my colleagues. Okay, and I will, what I will do uh, as a good reviewer, right? Uh, I should review frequently, doing a few changes at a time, right? So uh, if uh, if this is uh, let's say uh, five. Uh, pull requests that are pending, uh, uh, I have already been assigned already. I'm gonna uh, review this one frequently, blah, 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 okay? Frequently in this sense mean that probably you should do every day, but it, does, it doesn't need to be uh, a long time period, right? Let's say 30 minutes every day, frequently, every day, help everyone, okay? Provide feedback to the author as soon as possible. Be responsive, right? Uh, uh, otherwise, the this pull request will be pending like forever. You know, let's say if you set the review uh, 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 workload, let's say every month. So if this pull request is assigned to you, what happens is that we need to wait like a month uh, to review. Okay, so it's not appropriate at all. Okay, provide feedback to the author. I'm, I want to emphasize again, feedback, 
feedback not criticism okay feedback we are talking about the feedback for improvement feedback for learning how can they improve that piece of code right uh, focus on the core issue first avoid nitpicking okay core issues what are the core issues uh, okay there's a systematic flaws in the code uh, there's a algorithmic issues the logical issues but what is the nitpicking? Oh, you forget to uh, write the uh, documentation. Oh, you forget the full stop in the doc string. You know, that's a really nitpicking. Does it, yes, it is. Is it important? Yes. But does it impact the code quality of the code base or not? No, right? So we should focus on the core issues. What are the fundamental uh, bugs uh, that we need to fix first? Uh, uh, the most priority bugs we should discover first, right? Use or create a review checklist uh, if need be. Okay, sometimes in the companies, they have a code review checklist as well, right? Uh, I'm gonna give you an example. Let's say uh, uh, Google code review checklist. Okay, yeah. The standard of the code review. This is the code review. Do we have it or not? How to do the code review? what to look for, okay? This is a, a question, an example question. In the design, uh, does this chain belong to the code base or not? These are the question, right? Functionality, check the complexity of the code. This is how they look, uh, review the test code, ask for the unit test. When you implement a new feature, do, do you also implement the test uh, as a statement or not, right? Uh, to test the, the feature that you implemented. Mm -hmm. Yeah, naming, whether the naming, con uh, follow the naming convention or not. Uh, do you uh, write any code comment or not? Uh, the style guide, uh, the coding style, uh, does it follow the standard or not, right? And that's, that's why this is a nitpicking, right? Prefix your comment with nit to let the developers know that it's a nitpick uh, that you think would improve the code, but it's not mandatory. This is a nitpicking, but which one is more important here? It's about the functionality, it's about the design, it's about the complexity of the code, uh, the test, the uh, quality one, these are the maintainability, readability aspect, right? Whether the code is maintainable or not, readable or not, follow the coding style or not, uh, well documented or not, right? Uh, this is an example of the uh, code review process at Google, okay? If you are interested, you just Google and learn more as well. This is a Google engineering best practices, how to do the code review as a reviewer and also as an author. Okay, yeah. Okay, provide feedback to the author. Choose uh, communication channels carefully. Think face-to-face uh, -face for contentious issues. Yeah, if, uh, 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 if uh, there are some uh, contentious issues, yeah, we, probably you should discuss like face-to-face -face, uh, rather than in, in the uh, email or in the system or that kind of thing, right? We want to create like a positive environment, not uh, a negative one. We should avoid like a toxic environment, you know? Uh, otherwise, uh, developers uh, or teams will not enjoy working in that companies at all. And then what happens is that they just leave, okay? General use tools, uh, generally use tools that provide decision traceability, right? So when we use the GitHub, GitLab, that kind of thing, uh, when you perform an action, everything, uh, there, there's a record in there. There's a history, uh, everything is traceable, who approved the code change, who reject the code change, uh, what is the comment that you provide, everything is traceable. You should, I mean, as a reviewer, you should give constructive and respectful feedback, okay? Uh, be, uh, you should provide reasons for reject a change as well, right? Uh, this code is rejected because what, right? Why you reject that piece of code? Be prepared to iterate and review again as well. So if you reject, probably the same code author may create a new change and uh, submit for review again, okay? As a team and the organization, uh, at the higher level organization or team, right? You should maintain a positive review culture. It, it's a gray line, you know, uh, review. Uh, sometimes people take it personally. Uh, it's not good at all. We should separate it. So that's why we should try to create a positive environment as much as possible. Don't critic like uh, 
in a negative way. Uh, it hurts people's feeling. We should not do that, right? To uh, we want to ensure the collegiality. Uh, be nice to everyone, you know. Uh, we should develop and reflect uh, on or revise uh, code review uh, policies as well. It's not like a one set, uh, one one what's up. It's not like a one off thing. Uh, everything can be improved. Everything can be revised. What is the policy at the beginning? Over time, uh, what went wrong? Uh, what went right? We can improve things in the future as well. Ensure that time spent is counted and expected, but watch for negative impact of assessment as well. We should ensure that the appropriate tools are available. Yes, how can we conduct the code review without the tools? Uh, that's impossible, right? Uh, we should promote the development of the appropriate code review checklist. Okay, if we want to do the, the code review, what should be the checklist? Okay, yeah, uh, and make sure the code review checklist should not be overlapped with uh, something that can be automate, uh, uh, can be automatically done. You know, for example, uh, uh, checklist. Uh, what what is the wrong checklist? Uh, is this code uh, complex or not? You know, we, we don't need uh, to do the code review to check the complexity. Just run the uh, uh, psychometric complexity and uh, identify the threshold. You know. We don't need to do that. We, we should uh, use a human for something, uh, produce, uh, make better good of human, right? And we should develop a mechanism to watch for bottlenecks in the process as well, okay? Okay, oh, I'm aware of time, <laughs> seven minutes left. What uh, do code reviews look for? This is uh, the, uh, the website that I just mentioned to you before, right? Uh, for example, you should look for the design, for the functionality, for the complexity, uh, for the test, for the naming, comment style, and the documentation. There are lots of things. And in the past, uh, I conduct this uh, research with the student as well, assessing student understanding and their mistake in the code review checklist. This is based on the 2107 uh, student code review checklist in the past few years as well, you know, you can check this one uh, later as well. What is the common mistake? What is the, what should be the right uh, code review checklist? You know, what should not be, what it should be. Yeah, you can check that as well. This is a, a sensitive issues, right? Uh, when we do the code review, we should uh, uh, consider this part as well. When we do the code review, it means that someone is looking at your work, okay? And, uh, sometimes you might have some attachment to it, right? And you take uh, the criticisms personally, uh, but you should not, okay? When someone criticizes the court, they just only criticize the court, but not criticize you. So uh, we should acknowledge the criticism and move on as well. Don't take it personally. Let it go, let it go. It's about learning. Think about, uh, use that part as a learning process, not the, something to demotivate yourself, okay? This, I, I just want to emphasize, okay? And remember, the review is not about you. It's about to improve the code. So uh, this is for an author, right? But as a reviewer, when you, um, uh, write the reviews, you should uh, not uh, attack the, the code authors. You should be constructive, uh, be objective to the, the code or the artifact that you review as well. You should not say, yeah, why, why, why you suck? Uh, why you write this piece of code? Uh, we should not say like that, you know? It's not, uh, it does not create a positive uh, uh, development uh, positive environment at all in the software development team, okay? Code review principles, right? Normally when we uh, do the code review, it should start from the beginning, but not the end. No one do the code review after the CICD build, you know? It should be the first step before doing any uh, uh, quality assurance, okay? A great code review is a great software engineer, okay? Uh, because being able to dig in and understand someone else's code. Yeah. So if when you can find bus, you are a great software engineer. You are practicing to be uh, a detailed person, a critical person who can critics the code uh, and uh, 
deeply understand the, that piece of code really well, right? And it's not just only identify the issues, but you can also suggest how to improve them as well. Uh, so doing code review is not just only for uh, the, the code base, but also for yourself as well, is the skill, critical thinking skill, okay? Good code review start from the, the same perspective as writing good code. You can do, uh, you can do the good code review, when you can write good piece of code as well, right? If we were to write the best version of this, what would this be, okay? So you already know uh, uh, in the, like uh, in advance that uh, uh, if, I, if I were you, if I need to improve uh, this piece of code, what would it be, right? Again, uh, I mentioned before, right? Critic the code, not the person, okay? The code only. Objectively, and the code that someone submit should not reflect upon them as a person. Code reviews should never take it personal. Okay, don't assume it is obvious. What you should not say, okay, at all. This is an obvious bug. Why you don't know? Ah, no, not everyone knows everything, right? We 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 should say that. Okay, uh, uh, if I were you, I would consider improving this. That kind of thing. Uh, be nice to everyone. Be respect. Okay, respectful. Yeah. As a code author, you should explain what you are doing and why. As a code reviewer, you should explain the feedback that you are giving and why it will help as well. Justify, right? And this is an, uh, an example of the bad pull request, okay? Informat, informat, oh, no, sorry, not, not bad one, good one, sorry. Uh, informative pull request. For example, they create a pull request here, okay? They start at the beginning that, Okay, the very first sentence give you the goal right away, right? This is a new HES uh, map implementation for JS, which is much more scalable than Node HES, okay? Why this piece of code is better, okay? That's uh, the justification, right? And why it is so important as well. What went wrong in the past? What went wrong with the previous issues? And why do we need uh, the new version, okay? This is a good one, yeah. So what a good code review summary should be, right? In, in the pull request description, you should explain what is the background context, what the bug is, what the change uh, achieves, how the change is tested, know the limitation of anything that is missing, what is missing, right? Uh, request change if the summary is incomplete, okay? What, what is that, right? This is a good place to pause and reflect, right? If the intention of the pull request is not clear, or you disagree with the goal, there's no benefit to reviewing further, right? Yeah, if you uh, receive one pull request, uh, sorry, one code review, and they say, good, <laughs> what to improve, uh, nothing, uh, or bad, uh, that's not good enough. But what, what is the suggestion? Uh, review will be useless or, or very poor quality review, right? When there's no suggestion at all, it's not actionable, you know, okay? So there are a few things uh, to remember, okay? Finding defect is not the sole goal of the code review, but it's about the code improvement, it's about the knowledge transfer, it's about the share code ownership, it's about lesson learned, that kind of thing within the team. And improving is not assessing, okay? We are talking about improve the code, but you should not critics only just say what, what's wrong, okay? But how to improve it, that's a key goal of doing code review. Okay, not only the code should be reviewed, but we should also review all of the deliverables. For example, the unit test, uh, as we did in the first uh, few slides, okay, we review the unit test function as well, uh, review the documentation, review the design diagrams, that kind of thing. Code review also enhance the team communication as well. In the past, I rarely talk to the student, but right now I create an opportunity, right? To do the code review together, make the lecture more interactive as well, okay? Um, I'm, I am also open for criticism as well, okay? Uh, oh, I, that piece of code, I did it wrong. I in, introduced the bugs, okay? So what I should do, right? Uh, so I, I am open to the criticism, yeah. Okay, and but you should be aware of some uh, subconscious bias as well. For example, experienced developers may not always be right, right? Uh, sometimes they can uh, 
uh, provide wrong suggestion as well, which is totally fine. But we can discuss, you know, uh, the pros and the cons. Okay, uh, what should it be? Which one makes more sense, right? Don't be influenced by the first reviewer or the senior developers. Let's say if you have two reviewers, the first reviewer said, "Okay, looks good to me." The second didn't do anything, and then just said, "Looks good to me." No, it should not be like that, right? Uh, you should be yourself. Uh, critic the code independently of each other. Okay, and Hooray, that's all. <laughs> I complete the lecture in one hour. Okay, any questions so far about the code review? Uh, probably if not, then uh, I will see you in the studio today. Uh, don't forget, today we have the assignment three uh, on campus assessment. Uh, I will see you around, yeah. All done. Thank you. Bye-bye. Have a good day.